fun. I don't get to do this very often. Usually I get like one, maybe one a year or something. My, but maybe, maybe we'll get a couple. But I'm, I'm excited to bring the, the word to you um, this morning. And it is really exciting. Um, I think this season with, with Matt being gone um, is going to be really special. Obviously, it's a, it's a little sad um, because we, we love him and we love his leadership. But I think this is this opportunity for us to come together as the church, um, to, to step into those roles, um, to be the hands and feet, to, to comfort one another, and, and to really press into this community. Because this community is growing, and I can see you come here each and every day, uh, or each and every time you come to the service, you're, you're hungry for Jesus. And you're hungry to do this together, um, and it's so special and awesome. And I, I know that this season of the three months of Matt being gone, everyone's going to step in, and we're going to come together, and it's going to be really cool. And I think it's a unique opportunity. So, looking forward, looking forward to that. But um, first, though, for those of you that might not know me, uh, I've been on the the team at Gateway here since 2019, and I've served in a, in a few different areas. Uh, I've been downstairs helping out the kids ministry, running that. I've been interim youth pastor, um, and a little bit of everything, kind of like the the Swiss Army knife, trying to just help out where I can. I don't know if that's a good thing because it's like, am I just a master of none and just able to kind of help out everywhere? That's probably some sort of uh, inner um, security thing. I'm just just kidding. Anyways, that's good. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to, to serve in whatever way that I can. But I've been here since 2019, um, and actually, I've been a part of this church community for over 15 years, which, like, as I say that, I'm like, I'm not, I know I'm not that old, but like, that's, you know, that, that's starting to get a, a decent amount of time. Um, but I've been thankful to be at this church for a long time and to grow up in this church and to now be serving at this church. And so many of you, there's still lots of faces here that have been with us that time too, and you've supported me, and I, I really appreciate that. So with Matt being gone, I'm stepping into the gap and helping run these services, and we're going to have different people bringing the word at, at different times, and that's going to be really special. And I know that we're going to be, we're going to be well taken care of. So, um, today, I want to talk to you about something that has been on my heart for a little while, and uh, it's, it's funny, last night, you know, I, was, I was talking with Kim, and I was starting to, like, overthink things. You're like, okay, uh, I, well, I don't know if I have the right, scr- right scripture, just all of those little bugs and those little things that happen when you're trying to communicate, or trying to communicate well, and she helped reassure me, like, it's going to be okay, but I'm just so humbled by the, like, how Holy Spirit and how God takes care of things, because the words that have been spoken this morning um, from Judy and, in, and in, the, in the prayer room have tied a lot into what I'm going to speak today. And I'm thankful for that, because that's that little bit of exhale. It's like, yeah, God, you, you got this, and, and he's going to speak. And so um, why don't we pray? And then we can, we can move forward with this, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, that we can, we can be here together as a community um, and to get to know you more and to lift you up and give you praise, Lord, as we, as we communicate, as I communicate, Lord, would you just take this message and um, have your presence on it, Lord. I know that you've been moving in my heart, and I know you want to encourage us and strengthen us and move us forward. And so we give this to you, um, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so over the past few years, I've felt God highlight this, this thing toward, for me. And I feel like it's so, it happens so often, um, and he's continually nudging my heart in this way. And I know if I asked most of you here, um, whether you're new to faith or you've been walking in, um, in the relationship with God for a long time, um, if, I, if I asked you if you wanted to develop and grow as a Christian, and see more of God in your everyday life, you would unanimously shout yes. Yes? Yes. Okay, that's good. It's a good start. All right? Um, um, but I, what I've noticed in my own life, and over the years, and through talking with other people, and doing life together, is that um, even though growing with the Lord doesn't seem difficult, it's not always easy. Maybe, maybe, and I say that it doesn't seem difficult as far as maybe the things that we need to do or the things that he asks us to do aren't super complicated, but I think sometimes we'd all be honest. It's like, man, this isn't, this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. I'm not, I'm not, maybe not where I thought I was going to be. And I think, 
I think a lot of us would agree to that. It's like, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. God, how am I, how am I at this mountain again? Or how, why am I going around this mountain again? And then we can sometimes get uh, a little frustrated. It might be a little, a little angsty, like, Lord, I, I, I want more of you. How come, how come this isn't, how come I'm not able to, you know, get and get on this path of growing with the Lord and stay there? And I think this idea, and I felt this burn, or I felt this burn in my heart for a long time of how and knowing, like, how can we, there's so much more of God. There's so much of God. There's this huge freedom that's available to us. And how can we, we only seem sometimes to just be on the outer, outer courts? Like, I know for all of us, we want to we wanna go deeper and deeper and deeper. But there's sometimes we might feel like, man, I, I, how, do I, how do I get there? And I think all of us have that deep burn, and I want to talk about that today. Talk about developing and pushing in and doing our best to, to grow. Um, and highlighting a few things and a, and a couple conversations and a couple thoughts that I have in, re, in regard to that. But I say all this about growing and developing as someone that's uh, also a school teacher and also someone who appreciates the process of learning. And I do understand, and there's a huge part of this, we don't just become we don't just um, have it all together right away. It's a lifelong journey, people, friends. Like it's all we're gonna. It's gonna happen over time, and there are gonna be those moments where where we're feeling it, and there's gonna be those moments where you're just like you're feeling a little stuck in the mud, but that's okay. We gotta take the pressure off of that. But I think we can be intentional about moving forward and. Um, doing the little things in order to grow closer to God so we see more of him in our day-to-day lives. Amen? Okay. Let's jump forward here. So our main text for today, today's message, takes us to Luke's Gospel in chapter 8. Um, and for many of us, if you've been in church for a, for a little while, um, you may have come across this scripture a few times, and you've heard a few messages on it. And the beautiful thing about the Word of God is you can read it a million times, and then all of a sudden, boom, something new hits you in the face. You're like, wow, how did I not see that? It, how, was that there this entire time? And it blows us away. So we're going to jump into this today. Um, and as I was praying over the past few weeks, I came across this passage. And I have this kind of illustration that I'm going to go into. But this passage kind of jumped out at me. And I think it really f- talks to the culture and sort of part of our problems with developing. So let's jump into this. So Luke chapter 8, we're in 4 to 15. We're in the NLT version right now. One day Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. A father went out to plant his seed. As he scattered it across his field, some seed fell on the footpath where it was stepped on. The birds ate it. Other seed fell among the rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died for lack of moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns that grew up with it and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When he said this, he called out, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Now, his disciples um, asked him what this parable meant. Again, they they weren't always up to speed with what Jesus was throwing down. And we were like that a lot of the times, too. (laughs) Um, And he said, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God, but I use parables to teach the others so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they look, they won't really see. When they hear, they won't understand. So this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word. The seeds that fell on the footpath represent those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy, but since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, then they fall away when they face temptation. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and the pleasures of this life. And so they never grow into maturity. And the seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, 
good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. So I want to unpack this a little bit, and then we'll go from there. But these questions, like, what soil are we? Is the seed being tended? Are we that good soil? I think we can read this chunk of scripture and see little aspects of ourselves in all of um, the different types of soils at different times. Um, the seed that goes to the wayside and there's no room for him, no, no room for his word, or it just gets scattered, scattered and taken away. The seed that goes to the stone and there's a flash of enthusiasm, but there's no hardy soil to take root. And the third soil, that the one that really stands out to me today, um, is the seed that gets choked out by the things of this world. We have good intentions. It's like, it's just the sneaky world that we live in um, that sucks up our attention and we get caught up in the day to day. And those things aren't inherently wrong, but they're so quickly become our focus and we soon forget to sit with the Lord, to spend time with him, to see the Lord in these things. And it's the day to day things. And I think all of us can see that in our own lives of those things that pop up so quickly. And this scripture speaks to that. But the, we have good intentions. And the thing that to really stands out is the seed is the word. We must cling to the word. We must cling to the word. This is the key, and we will come back to that multiple times today. But that is something that we need to take away from this scripture. Is to hold on to word, to soak in it and to let that be in and through you. Um, I want to be someone that can hear what God is saying and understand, and I think all of you do too. Just like the, in the, when God was working, or Jesus was working with the disciples, there was moments where they just, they weren't able to hear, and they weren't able to understand, and it took time for them to be able to understand those things, but I know that all of us, deep down inside, we want to be able to hear the Lord, see, like read his word, hear from Holy Spirit, and then walk that out. I definitely know that we want to do this. And the thing that highlights that, if we aren't able to really sustain that and have that rich soil, is they never grow to maturity. And that's kind of what we're talking about, that development piece. Um, in another translation, it says, their growth is quickly choked off by their own anxious cares, the riches of the world, and the fleeting pleasures of this life. And then lastly, patiently produce a huge harvest. See that word that sneakily is, you can really jump over, um, that we and want to you know, be productive and to be, hit, like, be able to um, really be mature right away. It's a patient harvest. It's a lifetime of sitting with the Lord and learning. And so those are a few things um, that jumped out to me with that initial, with that scripture. And so when I think of this idea of developing, when I think of this idea of growing with the Lord, I'm going to pull on some of my, the first thing that pops into mind, the big thing in my life, um, which was sports, and specifically hockey. Um, and I still got the bit of the hockey hair and the, and the beard, so it's, it's ingrained in me. Um, to my mom's, you know, disappointment of having long hair sometimes. <laughs> I got I to rock it when you have it, I guess, right? <laughs> um, but for the large majority, majority of my life, I, um, for those of you that don't know, I, I played hockey. And I was chasing the Canadian dream. Um, and I played five years of junior hockey. I played in Chase. I played in Salmon Arm. I played in Salmon Arm. I played in Duncan. I'm back to Salmon Arm. And then I played down in Virginia um, in college. And hockey was one of those things that it taught me so many things. Um, taught me so many things about who I am, um, work ethic, teamwork, discipline, time management, um, how to develop your craft, how to develop your skill, um, working with people, working with a coach, being coachable, all of those things. I learned a lot of it through hockey, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, I had some success, I, you know, I had, but I, you know, I ultimately didn't reach the ultimate goal of the NHL because I wouldn't be talking to you here today. I would be getting ready for a Stanley Cup playoff game with the Leafs or something. <laughs> Maybe second, third line center, get Kerfit out of here, you know, and put Mistel in. But uh, that's okay. I, I love what I'm doing here, and that's and it's okay. <laughs> it's great. It's awesome. Um, 
But throughout the journey of hockey, I remember dealing with so many things um, that were hard too. Self-doubt, competition, comparison, tough relationships. There are some good teams and some good communities, some not some, so good teams. And there's just that constant trying to get better, trying to move on to the next level. And that wears over time. It definitely, and I remember my, by my 20-year-old season, and, you know, people are getting traded left, right, and center, and you're, like, sitting there, and you're like, oh, do, do I have, what, are they going to keep me? Am I going somewhere else? Am I going to get to play? And there are all of those things that start to pop up, and it's not always easy. I mean, sometimes junior hockey, or not sometimes, it's a bit of a business, and so there's that pressure in those things that start to happen. Um, and I had a new coach every single year for my, like, last, like, six to seven years. So, you know, you establish yourself, feeling good. So coach recruits you onto his team. You know, you're having a good year. You're developing. You know, next year you're maybe going to be, you know, second, maybe, maybe first line. And then, boom, management doesn't like that coach because they're not, you know, because of various things, they're gone. New coach comes in. And, okay, so now I'm here trying to develop, trying to, like, prove myself to a new coach. All of the same things are happening. You're like, oh, they're going to see my strengths. Are they going to see my weakness, weaknesses? And so on and so forth. And there's something, and, and there was some good coaches, and there were some not-so-good coaches. And there's coaches that really saw me and were able to champion me and help me really grow. And then there were some times... Maybe it didn't click, and there was their focus on other players, and there's that, that kind of battle. And I bring this up because I, as I reflect on my sports journey, how often can our lives, jobs, and our faith journeys bring up many of these similar emotions and feelings of do I have you know, what it takes in my job? Um, am I doing enough? Um, you know, in my walk with God, or all these different things. There's the comparison thing of, you know, seeing someone and wanting to, you know, in a good way, too, of, like, trying to be like that. But there's just all this stuff, the insecurities, the emotions, the ups and downs of faith, life, job, all of these things come flooding in. And we are trying to, with those things, we're trying to get better. We're trying to move forward. Um, but it isn't always easy. The thing is with sports is it takes time and being inten intentional with what we want to improve at. There's a, de there's a development piece and it's not always linear. And I think if you're a sports person, you can probably relate to what I'm talking about. But even if you're not a sports person, you probably had a coach or, a, or maybe a teacher or a mentor, someone that was walking with you that really kind of saw you and helped you develop. And you probably have gone through different things that you've tried to learn and, and you had success at, and there's some things that maybe it was harder for you. Um, but I, I hope that this kind of illustration, this thought, um, and this pairing of development with sports kind of lines up. But what I'm kind of leading to here is, during your life, you, like I said, you've probably had these bosses, coaches, mentors um, help you succeed, succeed. But when that one teacher, when that one coach, when that one person sees you for your good, your bad, and is able to walk alongside you and develop you, man, does that not change something? And I, I think it's one of these things is that we actually have the greatest coach of all time. It's God. And I think of, and I want to pull on that analogy as we are working on developing and talking about development, is like we have all that we need through him. He is the greatest coach. And so here are a few thoughts and a couple of things that I want to talk about here. And so our first first kind of point is we have to get to know and spend time with the greatest coach. We have to. Um, our identity needs to be rooted in God and know that we are truly loved and on his team. Because I think if we want to develop, we have to have that identity. We have to have that beginning place in us. And we have to spend time with the coach to learn his voice, to learn what he says, and hold on to those things. And those things are going to be able to start us on that journey. And I think there's different things no matter where we are on our faith journey. I think we can lean into that a little bit more and know and see ourselves through him even more. I think, that's, I think we can do that. 
He made each and every one of us with certain gifts and talents specific to us. He was the scout that said to us, you check all the boxes, right? No matter what, you were worth dying for. And I love, and he loves us so much that he sent his son so that we could have relationship with him. That's the ultimate, like, yep, I see you, you're on my team, let's do this together. And I think that's something that we can lean into and we can hold on to. And I think sometimes we forget about that piece. We forget about our heritage in Christ pretty quickly because of the things of this world. And so as we remind ourselves and spend time with the greatest coach, um, I think that's going to help us. Sometimes I like to pull on this coach analogy with a little bit more and pull it into like the Trinity a bit. We have the Holy Spirit who walks with us on, on the daily, our counselor, our guide. He's like the skills coach. That's kind of like on the ground, okay? Getting in the nitty gritty, doing the drills with you, whispering, giving you little pointers here and there. And I like that. I like that he's with me in the day of the day. But then we also have Jesus, who's like the Hall of Famer. Like he lived he, the perfect, the perfect one, and not only that, we have his life in the Bible. We have his direction there for us. Like, it's the perfect playbook. So we just need to, like, hold into that and, and, and follow and practice the way. And I think we're going to be okay. And then God, up there, all seeing the eye in the sky, who's able to have that, that vision of the entire outcome. That he sees he sees us. He sees where things are going to go. He knows where we're going to be. And, that, and that's pretty special. He's the architect of the team, the beginning and the end, the one who made the plan so that we could forever be on his team. So I think that's something that we should, we should hold on to. And this idea of coach. Yeah, I think we're... I think that I, I want to move, move on with this one. So the second part of trying to develop and, 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 and development piece would be um, the enemy wants to keep us on the bench, doesn't he? Um, there will be things in our lives and in ourselves that the enemy will try to use um, to keep us frozen and stuck, just sitting there, afraid. I don't want to go in. Don't put me in. And that happens. And that's okay. And that's okay, but we can move past that. We have to give these things to the Lord to allow him to work in and through those things. He's bigger than all the things that we've experienced, and we can lay down those things, and he will come close. Because the enemy wants to remind us of the, our weaknesses, the things that we've been through, the, the little things that will pop up, in order to, that we're focusing on that thing again, and we're not able to move forward. And I know a lot of your stories, and you've known, known some of my stories, and we go through difficult things. That's, that's, part, that's part of life, but he is there, and when we surrender and lay those things down at his feet, he can, it might not, take, it might not be right away, but over time he will fill and he'll help heal those things so that the enemy can't use those things anymore. And we can look to what God did for us and stand strong. And the next part of this, the enemy wanting to keep us on the bench, is kind of falling back to the soil piece. Is when we're not actively growing. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and the pleasures of this life. And we talked about that a little bit. In Colossians 3, it says, to set our minds on the things above and not on the things of this earth. In Romans 12, 2, it speaks not to, con to conform to the things of this world, but to renew our minds and onward. He just rebukes Peter in Matthew, chapter 16, for thinking like a man of this world. Uh, and then goes on to tell the disciples that they will have to lay down their lives, lives, but it will give them true life. And then in James 1, which we'll read a little bit later, it says to refuse to let the world corrupt us. And in another translation of that verse, it says um, to not let the world's values corrupt us. That's strong. Some strong language right there. But I think that it happens so often for us, is the enemy is going to throw whatever, whatever he can to in life to keep us busy and distracted. 
And I think a lot of this is like, we don't have bad intentions. We're not there just like chasing after our own kingdoms. I think there's t- times that maybe we do that. Um, but we're not doing that. We're, we're living our life. We're doing this. We're trying to save up for, save money for retirement. We're trying to do, you know, grow our, grow our careers and do these all things that are, aren't inherently wrong. But are they first? Because he needs to be first. And all of those other things are going to come. And I know it's not easy and there's lots of things that pop up. But I think we can be intentional about doing what we can to, you know, pull back. Like, like what Mike was talking about, Sabbath, is, is fight the busy and spend time with the one. Fight the busy, spend time with the one. Get some coaching time in and, and lean into that. Um, third point, trying to steward good soil, trying to develop, is that head to heart transition. We must cling to his word and allow it to saturate our hearts, making the transition from something we know, head, until something we truly receive, heart. Repetition, repetition, going back to his promises. And pulling on the sports analogy again, because it's right there for us, that playbook, that Bible, the word of God, we can, we can hold on to those things. Like That is what the seed is. It's talking about the word and the teachings of the Lord. We can hold on to those things. And even, even so, as we begin to hear his voice um, and write down the things that may be Holy Spirit or things that are pressing upon us, let's go back to those things. Let's take the journal writings and like, let's com- get that with the word and hold on to those things and not just write it down and then get going on with our lives. Let's bring it back out, read it, and remind ourselves of all that he's done. Because that's when it's going to make that transition from head to heart. Sometimes I think it does take a million times for something to sink in. And there is going to be those times where we just have to learn something the hard way. And that's a little frustrating. But I think if we, if we can do our best um, to just try to learn things ahead of time, but just to try to marinate in God's word. And that's one thing I really want you guys to take away, um, kind of pairing on this um, Sabbath and and the word, is that you're trying to be a master of something. What does it say, 10,000 hours to be a pro? And we're not trying to be necessarily pros, but that would be awesome. But there is that piece of, like, knowing something that when you're playing, when I was playing hockey, it's funny, I go to try to coach hockey now, and you're like, okay, I did all these things naturally for so long, okay, now I have to, like, break it down and teach this little piece-by-piece thing. Um, And it takes time. It takes a little bit to get it from, you know, that head knowledge to, okay, heart, it's it's active and moving in me. Um, But I think we can do it think and I know that we can do it in the I think it's an impassioned maybe the passion translation but there's also in another translation too it talks about the engrafted word and I love that word picture that it is in us that it is part of us that has become us engrafted into us and I think that's a great place to start and it's a great place to 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 move towards and to try to get to is let's be ones that are hearers of the word and that it soak into us as best we can and let the Lord fill us up and he's going to water us. He's going to water us. Okay, so my last point here. This is one of those, those coaching th- that your coach says and you remember it for forever. This is what he used to say. The process takes care of the outcome. The process takes care of the outcome. Yeah. We must be faithful with the little things and trust God with the outcome of our development and the fruit that will come from our lives. We need, but, but we need to give ourselves grace knowing that this process takes time. Remember, we don't have to reach level nine by our 40s. Okay? There's not one of these things, levels or whatever. We're growing with the Lord, um, but we do need grace, and time. In this passage, it talks, in Luke, it talks about clinging to the word and patiently producing a good crop with patience. 
patience, meaning it's going to take a little bit of time. And I don't want you to create this like angst or this like burn, this unhealthy thing, because there is, it is going to take some time, but I think we can be intentional and want to grow in the Lord. It doesn't have to be an unhealthy thing. I think it's a very healthy thing to want to grow, um, but taking the pressure off of that process is, is, is important. Taking the grace. Um, we must trust him with the fruit and what's going to come. If you remain faithful and have good soil, he's going to naturally do things in your lives. Remain connected to the vine and the fruit will continue to grow. It's John 15. He doesn't call us to a job or a thing per se. He first calls us to him. He first calls and he, and then the fruit will come. He calls us to him, and then he will follow through with the development and the maturity and all of that kind of thing. But it's to him first, and always to him first. That's what he said, come to me, come to me, come follow me. I will make you fishers of men. I will make this a, a light yoke. But you have to come to him. You have to sit with him first. Maturity isn't necessarily the fruit. That's just a product of spending time with the one. In the way that we live our lives, our light shines out, and he starts to move through us. It's a natural thing. And you'll start to see um, your, the environment change as you just be that light in your lives. Being faithful with the little things does mean actively moving towards and putting effort in with our walk with God. If we're looking at any, any sport, relationship, skill, hobby, you would say that you need to develop. You would need to put in a little bit of time. Yeah? Um, I think that's fair to say. It, you know, we're not just masters right away. And I think, and, our, and I, know, I know our spiritual lives are not different. And I think sometimes it's so easy that we get, we, you know, we get busy or whatever when we hear a word and then boom, the next day we're worried about the things or we're living life. And it's so easy to move, to move past that. But we need to be practicing these things and these little spiritual things like Sabbath, like reading your Bible, praying, spending time in community. Um, they're important and they help us. I want to say a couple things in, in James. In James 1, um, 21, it says, so get rid of all the filth and your ev- evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts. That's an engrafted word for it has the power to save your souls but don't just listen to god's word you must do what it says otherwise you are only fooling yourselves that's not always easy to hear but i think it's something that we can hold on to if you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless but pure and genuine religion in the sights of god the Father means caring for the orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. And a little earlier in Luke, Matt was preaching on this not too long ago about building a foundation, right? And it says, so why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against the house, it stands firm because it is well built. This isn't to me to preach or strive or to tell you to strive or the performance. That's not what we're saying here at all. It's, but it does take a little bit of intentionality, and we want to be hearers and doers of the word. I think in today's culture, there's so much information, there's so much learning we can have, and it's easy to just take in, take in, take in, but are we soaking it and applying it and then moving it forth into our lives? Or is it just here, and then so quickly, is it, is it developing? Is that word developing or not? But we need to take what we learn and apply it to our lives. If we want to grow and have good soil, we need to do our best to be faithful with the little things. And the process will take care of the outcome. The process will take care of the outcome. He will take care of the outcome of our lives if we're faithful in loving him 
and growing in him and spending time with him. Um, Kim, would you be able to come to the, up here and maybe just play a little bit as I close and wrap up some thoughts here? I want us to take I want us just to take a little exhale, reflect a little bit, and rest in God before we move on with the rest of our day and kind of practice what we preach here a little bit. Um, I know, as we go back to that initial question, I know that if I asked you all and those who might be new to faith, if you wanted to grow in your walk with the Lord and you wanted to mature and do your best to develop, you would say yes. I know that you all want to be walking in that practice of the presence of seeing the Lord um, in your day-to-day, in your jobs, in your lives, in your communities, that early church. Um, I think about the series that Mike has been doing on Sabbath, and it's part of a greater thing called Practicing the Way. It's a greater series called Practicing the Way. Um, And it's about practicing the teachings of Jesus. The people in New Testament times were called people of the way. They were so dedicated to Jesus' teachings because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And um, that they were true disciples and were doing what they could to develop and to walk that out. And we need to be people that practice the way, to do what we can to spend time with the Lord. And a lot of these things, like there isn't a secret recipe to your quiet time or your, or your life with the Lord. And I didn't get into too many practical things, but I think it's a little shift here and there, right? Just like Mike was saying, how can I carve out this space, this time? How can I hear this, um, this word and then sit on it a little bit during the week? Revisit it, remind ourselves of what he's doing. And that's going to help us a lot. I think you're going to start to see God in your weeks. He's going to interrupt your day to day. And I think that's what we all want. We want him interrupting our days and helping us and walking alongside us. Let's work with our coach. Yeah? Let's work with the good coach. Let's lean back into that because he is good. He's not a harsh coach. That old school coach that's just going to whip you get, get to get going. No, he's gentle and lowly and walks alongside us says, you know, I can call you up to more. You got so much more in you. Let's do this together. Let's do this together. And so it's praying. It's reading our Bibles, clinging to the word in community, talking about it, spending time worshiping. It's not complicated, but it's not always easy. But we can be intentional with carving out time, putting away the things of this world, and to have that kingdom mindset as best we can as best we can. So why don't we just close our eyes? Why don't you just relax a little bit? Get the piano up maybe a little bit louder so you can just sit in that. And I want you to just connect with with the Lord. Whatever that looks like for you, maybe just close your eyes and exhale. Because we get so rushed. I'm going to stop talking for a little bit. just worship the Lord and sit in this moment. maybe our prayer team come up to the front and if someone if there's just a few people and if you need prayer if you want to just need a, if you need to ask for maybe there's healing in something or something that's been just sticking with you that you you're having a hard time letting go it's one of those things that maybe the enemy uses to keep you on the bench let's let those things go as best we can and give them to the Lord yeah yeah totally 